Happy Friday, YouTube. Um, just on my way home, finished from work. It's another commute. Can't get any better than a 91 commute in Southern California. Uh, for those of you guys who don't live in California, 91 is the uh, infamous death trap for for commuters. Just one of those highways that's always, always, always mixed up with traffic all day long. But uh, anyway, uh, today I wanted to kind of take this time and go over some of the some of the questions that I asked, I get asked quite often, uh, which is well, not only on the YouTube, but more even when I'm at gas station filling up or just some random guy who walks up to me at the parking lot and, you know talks about my car and a lot of the question I get is you know how much you pay for it and it must be expensive to uh, to run it must you know eat a lot of gas and all those type of things so today I wanted to kind of talk to you about you know how much it actually cost to to run this car for about a year Engine takes a lot of them. It, the engine takes 10 quarts of oil 
purchase of this car, but I never used it. You know, that's that's how that's how bad I don't like taking my cars to dealership. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, from the get go, a thousand miles, five thousand miles, ten thousand miles. I did three oil changes so far. The car has about thirteen thousand miles on it right now. So. Yeah, so about first year I did three oil changes with three filters and that came up to about $489. Uh, and uh, I did change an air, air filter on this car. Uh, I mentioned briefly on my other video, but the original filter it came from, it, it, I don't know if it's the California, the, all the pollens or whatnot, but it, it got dirty very, very quickly. Um, and I. I didn't know it was washable, reusable. I didn't know. Just didn't want to take chance. So I went ahead and purchased the the Ford Performance filter that that they make for uh, GT350 and GT500s. They they share the same filter, I guess. But yeah, these are uh, like the AEM dry flow filters. You can reuse them. You can wash them. Uh, and uh, you know they, that cost me about 85 bucks. And you know I know I can just reuse this, wash it. So. You know, it's, I, I take that as a decent investment, um, and it probably flows a little better than OEM uh, uh, regular filter. So, a win-win situation. Uh, so I had that air filter change once, uh, and let's talk about tires, brake pads, and brake rotors because even though I haven't changed any of them during my first year of ownership. Uh, these are something you're going to be changing out, especially if you track your car a lot. Uh, and at some point you're going to have to change them. So what I did was I kind of divided them up. So, you know, I divide the cost up to the years of the ownership. So we have a good idea how much it'll cost per year, if that makes sense. Uh, the tires is $295, $35. 19s up front and it's 305 35 19s in the rear and they're both Michelin Pilot Super Sports uh, now the front tires if you were to get them from tire rack for both you're about you're spending about $680 for front two and $540 for rear two believe it or not even though rear tires are wider they're much cheaper because the, the, that size, you know, there are more and more companies make that size tires. The 295, 35, 19 are one of those sizes that not a whole lot of people use. Um, so in total, if you were to replace all four tires, it'll cost you about $1,220 for four tires. Um, now, judging from the wear of my current tire, uh, I took this car about twice to uh, big track, about three times to autocross, and about three uh, canyon runs, I'd say, so far. And I do push the car pretty hard when I'm at the track. Uh, but again, these uh, PSS tires, they tend to hold up pretty good. Uh, again, about 13,000 miles on it. The threads, i say it's still got good... Uh, a good 25 20 percent left um, you know if I were to just regular daily drive around you know I think I can definitely be on these for another four or five thousand miles no problems um, so I figured you know normal people buying this car you probably have to replace these tires every two years or so so I would divide that you know 1220 to by two so you know give it or take it's about six hundred ten dollars per year for tires uh, now obviously if you get more expensive tires our compounds or you know more stickier in extreme summer tires is that cost could go up but again i'm just going by the oem specs here brake pads oem pads uh, and the oem rotors in my opinion or they're such a good pads and rotors except for all the brake dust it makes you know I actually wouldn't even look into aftermarket pads or or rotors here uh, you know this car needs to be able to stop consistently given the weight you don't want to be fooling around with it and I've kind of looked around I mean even 
if you want to get nice rotors aftermarket and pads it's gonna run just about the same cost anyway or maybe even sometimes a bit more expensive um, so yeah the the stock rotors I'm sorry the stock pads uh, the fronts are 250 and rears are 135 so total is about 385 um, for all four corners or pads which really isn't too bad and uh, now the rotors are the, the killer and uh, the four corners the rotors are gonna hit you hard at about $1,100 and again these are because uh, you know it's two piece it's not truly a two piece but it's built like a two piece floating rotor with the aluminum head in the middle so it's, it's a nice rotor but uh, you know the, every time you replace it it's gonna cost you pretty pretty good big bucks but to be honest with you guys you know a lot of brake pads and these shops recommend you every time you change the pads you have to change your rotors uh, you know unless you're just gonna die or your pads are gonna you know it's not gonna work that's all BS really all the cars I've owned when I had my Evo when I had my you know Boxer S all you know M5 E60 M5 all those high performance cars I've had those rotors for especially my Evo I had my stock rotors for 65,000 miles only thing I've done to that rotor was to change pads now mind you I, I was measuring the the thickness of the rotor carefully because you know there are minimum thickness you don't want to you know you don't want to pass otherwise uh, the rotor can break or crack uh, during hard use so you know but a little bit of lip you know those type of things are not a big deal uh, you can just simply change your pads and make sure you bed in the pads properly uh, and you just don't have a lot of problems you know and, uh, and for these rotors I, I absolutely don't think you need to change these unless you see visual signs of crack uh, or uh, lots of craze lines or uh, you know the, when you measure the thickness of the rotor it gets past that minimal uh, you know uh, the thickness now I don't know what the minimal thickness for these rotors are I'll have to look that up but uh, you know again don't feel like you have to change out these rotors every time because uh, again they're, they're big dollars and you just really don't have to uh, but yeah so I mean rotors and pads I mean yeah the pads you're probably going to be going through them i say similar as tires you know these pads you know they're pretty soft pads uh, you know you can tell by how much brake dust it generates but on the flip side it's good because it, it bites very very well uh, uh, it doesn't overheat it doesn't get greasy and you know every time you step on it it gives you the braking power all the power you need it's very linear power uh, you know it's, it's, it's fantastic so uh, but yeah I mean judging from pads let's say once every two years that's another hundred ninety two three dollars so all in all every year if you look at the oil filter tires brake pads and all those uh, things that you know are just wear and tear items you're looking at about fourteen hundred dollars per year there fourteen hundred now maybe a little less this is exactly thirteen hundred something something but I mean come on installation fees whatnot it's gonna get up there probably fourteen hundred to fifteen hundred dollars per year obviously that doesn't include gas uh, and gas usually I have to fill this car up once a week uh, and I drive my commute well, I mean, forget about that. Each tank, I think I get about 280 to 300 some odd miles. Uh, I mean, to give you guys an idea, my average MPG is about 17, 17.5. So that gives you uh, that give you guys a pretty good idea how what the type of gas mileage you get. I mean, if you drive very uh, very gentle I, it, it, you can get up there to about 19 to 21 uh, mixed highway and city if you're just highway cruising yeah it'll get you about 24 25 uh, you know because it's got that long overdrive six gear you, your, your rpm drops down to about 2022 300 at highway speeds 
and that's uh, that's how you save gas on that oh yeah let's talk about the insurance now it's hard for me to tell you guys how much insurance costs on this car because I had me and my wife on both this car and our uh, family car SUV the Mazda CX-5 um, but to tell you guys the truth it really didn't change a whole lot since I had Boxster S and before that I had a uh, even just regular 3 series 328i uh, you know my insurance only went up I say about 60 70 dollars every six months so about 10 15 dollars a month it went up and right now I'm paying about 130 dollars a month uh, that's not just for this car that's for both this car and my SUV with both myself and my wife included so yeah so well I mean let's talk about I know I've been asked how much I've uh, I pay for this car and what my uh, payments are like um, so that's something I can get into so the car the sticker price was just about fifty six thousand five hundred dollars and this car is the track pack uh, option and the dealership the dealerships like any other dealership back then they were charging arm and a leg for dealer markups and they had two thousand dollars added on for some stupid car door ding protection and some interior protection and security uh, system package that they wanted to charge me two thousand dollars for they also wanted to charge me in the beginning fifteen thousand uh, dollars on top as ADM for the car so it was well into seventy thousand dollars now uh, obviously I went in I did my thing I talked to the the straight to the general manager there and fairly quickly I was able to get the car at the MSRP plus uh, three thousand dollars for pretty much everything that was already installed on the car like those thing protection and whatnot so total MSRP I paid for this car uh, it was fifty nine thousand five hundred dollars and and when I got GT, when I got that car in, in Southern California, three thousand dollars over MSRP for one of these were a pretty decent deal, to be honest. Uh, and the the option it had, the color it was, it, it just was exactly to my liking. So I didn't want to pass it up. Um, so yeah, I paid three thousand dollars extra. I, I suckered, I, I suckered into it, but uh, you know. I don't regret it I think I got a decent deal on it and especially these cars tend to the value tend to stay up there pretty good I don't think depreciation hits hard on, on these cars kind of like the Ford Raptors you know they the, the value of those things just don't go down that fast but yeah uh, that's how much this car costs and uh, to be honest with you guys the, even the new GT 350s for those of you who are waiting for you know to be able to buy these things at under MSRP or whatnot maybe in other states you might be able to but in Southern California it's, it's gonna be fairly tough because they just got the news out the 2018 the new model the facelifted version the GT350 and ours they're not even gonna produce them throughout the whole year the GT350 is being produced for I believe six months or seven months only and the R is only going to be produced for five months I believe so it's going to be even more scarce to be able to find one of these things and you bet those dealerships are going to try to charge your arm and a leg on top so uh, maybe the best way to do it is to buy the current model while they're still sitting in the dealer lot I mean if you were to get them now I think some people are be able to you know they're getting these at the sticker price so if you can more power to you uh, you won't regret it do it you don't even have to test drive it take my word for it if you like driving if you like the noise that the V8s make one of the best V8s out there especially the sound 
uh, you know you're not gonna regret it at this price point um, so yeah that really concludes uh, today's quick video and I will uh, come back next week try to think of something to uh, shoot if you guys have any questions or uh, or comments let me know again please leave me a thumbs up and and subscribe if you want to follow me guys uh, have a great weekend stay safe out there and uh, yep I'll see you guys again ciao